Biodiversity credits are financial instruments that can be used by companies, communities and countries to finance tangible outcomes for biodiversity protection or restoration or safeguard. For example, a company can buy a biodiversity credit to support the protection of forests. A company can also buy biodiversity credit to support the protection of an ecosystem which leads to the protection of a specific species like a cheetah. Let's look at a company uh, which sources avocados from a forest in Colombia. So the company has a clear dependency on the health of that forest, but the forest is increasingly getting degraded. This company goes to a project developer, let's say the project developer X. The project developer will say, I will for the next 30 years guarantee an uplift in biodiversity in this patch of land if you are able to guarantee a steady flow of income which will be shared with the community of that forest as well as supporting the outcomes of a biodiversity uplift. So in this way, the company has an opportunity to finance the outcome. The community is able to secure an income as well as the project developer has been able to create an economy around that forest which is not extractive but is actually able to finance protection. They are extremely valuable in and of themselves, but also have a value for new research. Through their DNA could actually unlock new medicines, but they may not be necessarily be protected through carbon credits. And therefore you need biodiversity credits to value species, to value a variety of ecosystems 
which is not only a green lush forest. The company is procuring um, infrastructure or is procuring furniture for its offices. It does have clear guardrails. We need similar guardrails for procurement of biodiversity credits. Was that credit developed in collaboration, in partnership with indigenous people on the ground? Was that credit able to show a clear uplift or a clear protection of biodiversity? And third, and equally important, does it come in complement to or instead of a company mitigating its own negative impact? One, integrity and governance has to be at the mainstay of this market. Second is the free prior informed consent of indigenous people. We need to change our language. Indigenous people are not beneficiaries of this system. They are the critical stakeholders. And therefore, any scheme, any project that we develop has to be done in close partnership with the indigenous people's communities. And then the third piece is corporate claims. Buying a biodiversity credit is not a solution on its own. It only works if it is complemented by the company's nature strategy of reducing its negative impacts and ensuring that it is regenerating nature wherever it has value chains, wherever it has operations. community, by acts of ritual and by acts of gathering. I grew up in an environment where literally architecture is part of how people were kept segregated from each other. And I think if we can understand the power of architecture to force us apart, to other each other, then we also have to be able to understand it as a force for the opposite, as a force to bring us together, as a force to express our cultures and our identities and who we are. I believe
believe that there's so much to learn from our cities, from the ways in which people live, from the rituals and lives of people that we aren't translating into architecture yet because our systems are uh, inherently colonial and deeply unjust. Panda Fanana, who was the first person from the Congo to study in Belgium. It turns out that he studied horticulture. He was a genius. He passed, uh, you know, summer cum laude. He, his research contributed to what the landscape of Belgium looks like. So the proposal takes a f the form of a series of stacked Congolese boats and each of the boats are uh, planted with species that come from Fanana's horticultural research. When boats are stacked up next to each other in many water landscapes in Africa, they become places for people to trade and gather. There are an infinite number of other ways of being that work from different perspectives, that unpack the world from entirely different worldviews, that really, you know, think about how we listen to the seasons, that think about how we collaborate with nature, that think of ourselves as an entity that is in conjunction with, you know, there's no even word for environment in so many languages because what's around us is not conceived of as outside. And I think those perspectives really have so much to offer to our present challenges because they're not only answering questions and solving problems, they're thinking about the question completely differently. Mm -hmm.